The National Labor Relations Board has issued a recommendation that the Amazon union vote in Bessemer, Alabama be redone. According to federal officials, Amazon used anti-union tactics, including an unauthorized ballot box, to defeat the drive. According to Huffington Post labor reporter Dave Jamison, Amazon employers, quote, unilateral decision to put a USPS box on site destroyed the laboratory conditions and justifies a second election. But Amazon argued it was USPS who put the mailbox there. More Perfect Union documented Amazon's actions. Let's go ahead and take a look. Every time we go to the bathroom in, the, in your stall, in the men's bathroom, as soon as you go to the stall, you got an anti-union flyer right there in front of you. You got, you got flyers in the break room. You got when you walking in and walking out, you got big banners saying early vote, vote no. When the election began on February 8th, Amazon deployed a concerted misinformation campaign targeted at its employees. We've seen Amazon try to confuse people by telling them they needed to vote by March 1st, even though the deadline was March 29th. And the reason for that was to try to get people to cast their ballots right after the captive audience meetings and before they've had an opportunity to engage with the union. Amazon felt if workers could be forced to vote quickly, they were likely to vote no. And once they voted no, they were not allowed to go back and change their vote. That's where the mailbox strategy came into play. If Amazon wanted workers to vote early, they needed a way to coerce and compel them to submit their ballots. Not only have I never seen a company install or have a mailbox installed on their property for purposes of mail ballot election, I've never even heard of a company asking for such a thing. Amazon initially asked the National Labor Relations Board if they could install a ballot drop box in the warehouse. The request was denied. When the request was denied, um, uh, went ahead and just disregarded what the board had said to them and installed it themselves. This is the first time I've, I've seen that. And in fact, when I've talked to some of my management side friends on the other side, of, they're all flabbergasted by what really is pretty audacious on the part of Amazon. Yeah, you know, you know, with Amazon having all of their uh, spyware, right? I mean, a lot of people are worried about, a lot of the employees actually were worried about uh, Amazon actually monitoring their vote. You know, you've got, they have a lot of technological gear. A lot of people are already kind of leery about, you know, Alexa in their, oh, I shouldn't have said that because now she might actually say something to me in the room, uh, but, you know, put, installing these sorts of devices. And so there was a bit of, not only was this, um, you, you know, a bold move by the company, but people are worried that they're actually monitoring their vote. Oh, for sure. And it, that's amplified if the, the ballot drop-off box is right there in your own workplace where, where your bosses can, can watch you, you know, submit your uh, vote or, more significantly, uh, not submit your vote. And what's so remarkable uh, about Amazon's decision to go forward with this was that they were they were rejected you know they they went to the nlrb and asked if they could do this were told mm -hmm. no and and did it anyway now the uh, the final vote tally was something like three to one in uh, against joining the union and so now you know if they can get a a revote the union is going to be faced with the, the question of whether or not uh, to kind of re-engage this process. And so the question will be, did Amazon's manipulation of, of the results significantly influence the results? In other words, is it worth it for them uh, to, to try again? Or was there uh, something fundamentally flawed about the approach that would make mm -hmm. uh, a, a revote a, a waste of their, their effort? What do you think? You know, again, it's it's just really hard to go up against Amazon. Amazon, it's very intimidating for these people. Um, again, you know, they have a lot of technology. We all are very aware of it, and so people are nervous. You know, are they are they being spied on? Are there you know? And that is a report that I've been hearing from, uh, or reports that I've been reading about how the employees are feeling about this mailbox sort of mailbox gate. Um, and so, you know, look, they are the second largest employer in the country. They're massive. There is a lot, uh, a lot, the employees, if they're making 15 bucks an hour, let's say, which Amazon touts itself and says, well, you know, we pay above the minimum wage, we, we give 15 bucks an hour, but that, when you're looking at a full-time job, equate, equates to about $30,000 a year. It's not much. And these, so it's not enough for people to really live off of. So I can understand 
this desire to unionize and potentially even, uh, especially after Jeff Bezos, you know, flies off to space and then says, hey, thanks to my employees for paying for this. You know, I wonder if that's actually going to have something to if that's going to contribute potentially to the vote turning out differently this time. Well, we'll see. And one argument to, to redo it would be a, analogous to the, the rationale for running a primary campaign against an, an incumbent, even when you know that you're very likely to lose. Because often what it does is it, is it forces that incumbent to then move in the direction of the challenger in order, in order to fend them off. You know, there's, there's, this, there's a great example of Sarah Smith a primary challenger to, uh, ironically, Adam Smith in, in, in Washington state. And her challenge to him, she ended up losing. She, she made it into the, into the general election, but she ended up losing to him by like 20 points in the end. But you could see him moving significantly, particularly on the question of Yemen. He was the, he's the chairman of the Armed Services Committee. He had a lot of oversight over, over whether or not House Democrats would, could or would challenge uh, you know, President Trump's waging of the war in, in Yemen. And under pressure from her, you know, he, he shifted on that position, and that, and that, and that changed the world. It, you know, it, it, you know, it, it, it moved him in a way that allowed a, a war powers resolution to get through the House. That pushed the U.S. to kind of scale back its, its support of Saudi Arabia in, in Yemen. And so even though she lost, there were some gains. And so during that campaign, and tell me, what, tell me if, if this was your perception, during that, uh, that unionization campaign, there was a ton of uh, bad PR that hit Amazon over the, mm -hmm. over the way that it was treating workers. Which, which resulted in them making some concessions nationally um, you know, a, a, around those uh, issues. So do you think that there could be value in, in rerunning the campaign, even if they think that they're likely to lose again? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. This is a, a PR disaster for Amazon. Remember P Gate, <laughs> where there was videos of, of people having to fill up bottles because they didn't have enough uh, of urine because they didn't have enough time to take a, a bathroom break. I mean, these types of things do work. Amazon has to make some concessions when these sorts of campaigns come out. So I do think that it is always valuable to go out there and to, you know, if it's under the pretense of, look, we're going to have a vote there, we're, we're campaigning to to unionize. No matter what, that sort of amplification of your message is good because then people, it, it exposes what's going on. People then say, wow, that needs to change. You get the public to point the fingers at Jeff Bezos flying off to space and saying, listen, buddy, now that your employees have paid for this, maybe you need to do something to elevate their their life you know, giving them better pay, whatever it might be that they're they're looking for. So I do think that these sort any so any time you can amplify your message, it's always going to result in some sort of benefit, even if that benefit is just the shift in public perception. Oh, yeah, I think I think that's exactly right. And so tomorrow on Rising, Lily Jamali joins us. Plus, Team Rising is here. Also, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss a video. We will see you tomorrow.